This episode of the Red Bull Rant is brought to you by the fine patrons that support us through patreon.com slash Red Bull Rant. You can support us for the low, low price of $1 a month, and you can get exclusive content, including a monthly wrap-up for the New York Red Bulls. We want to send a special shout-out to our patrons who support us at $5 a month. That is our producer-level reward. Thank you to Jeremiah Dempster and William Martin. Now, on to the show. The Red Bull Rant is a free-flowing conversation amongst three lifelong wackos that may contain adult language. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, my friends, to the show never ends. This is the Red Bull Ram Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Iapico. I'm Pat McDonald. I'm Truman, and this is episode 302. Why y'all gotta waste my flavor? Damn. Damn, indeed. Well, you know who didn't waste their flavor this week? The Red Bulls, because they brought nothing this week. No, they wasted my flavor. Yeah, they wasted my time. Flavor, and they wasted it. They wasted everybody's time. I could have seen a cool band that night, but no. Hey, at least, at least you. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. I was thinking the the game. Sorry, I was thinking the home opener, not the story you told I, about selling your tickets. That was the home opener, not the. Not I the could script. have, I could have repeatedly punched myself in the testicles hmm. instead. I mean, you could have done that while watching them. Well, I think that I, was always a possibility. Yeah. That's what it felt like the team did anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Red Bulls hosted Orlando City and Sasha Kleschen and gave up a goal to, of course, Sasha Kleschen. Only goal of the game, and the Red Bulls lose one nothing at home to one of the worst teams in the league. Uh, yep. It was bad. It was bad. Right. Let's let's start with tweets. Uh, Truman, you got those or do you want me to? Yeah, if, if we just got a few tweets, uh, these are directly from the game. Uh <laughs> Our friend Steven Santos at Creepy Taxi said, We sucked. No offense, no desire, no fans, no atmosphere, no heart, no will to win tonight. Enough said. Uh, Wayne Harrison, W. Harrison 83. Abject from start to finish. Could have played all night and not scored. Clueless in attack. So glad I stayed up until 1.45 a.m. UK time to watch it. Oof. Yeah. And then uh, Tonino at Tonino M said, Was BWP on the field today? I mean, he was the only one playing creative midfielder position at, at one point. So, yeah, yeah, he, uh, he became he became uh, Thierry Henry for a while there, except without himself to pass to. Right. Yeah. All right, and uh, we have an email this week. Uh, so at Adam from Earth says, for missing most of our back line, we didn't defend half bad. My concern is with the offense. Armors is going to have to make some decisions about who's playing and where because without Kaku, there is no channel to BWP. Just chip it ahead and pray for the best. Hopefully, returning players and defense can improve the offense, but God knows how often we'll have to put out a Frankenstein lineup. Cautiously pessimistic, Adam from Earth. So, I mean, I'm not, this isn't going to be my dislike, but how many times does this team have to do the desperate chip ahead and think it's going to work because it, it hasn't ever. Because yet again, I said this a million times, Bradley Ray Phillips is not the kind of forward who you're going to lob the ball up to and he's going to come streaking down the field. He is a target striker. You have to put it to him in a position for him to score, not throwing it up the field and think he's going to run past defenders because it just is not going to happen. Especially now that he's not as fast as he used to be. Right. And he was never a speed demon anyway. Yeah. Well, are we done reading tweets? There's like a whole bunch more. No, no, no. no. Those that, were the day after. So we're yes, not that. We haven't gotten to those yet. Yeah, okay. Because I asked a very specific question or a set of questions. So it's not the, the reaction to the game. Yeah. Do not worry. <laughs> it seems, it seems, I don't know, it seems kind of apropos. But, right. Yeah. Uh, it's related to the game. So it's like afterthoughts territory. All right. All right, so likes, dislikes. Uh, Pat, you can go first. What do you dislike about this one? I mean, you know, it's uh, the team, yet again, seems to be out of offensive ideas. Um, This is a problem that has been going back to last year when they started under Chris Armas. 
They have not been scoring as many goals under Armas. And it, it's, you know, aside from anomalies here and there where they have multi, multi-goal games, one of which being last week against San Jose, although if you read the review by Matt Doyle, one of our favorite guests, that may have been more on San Jose's defensive tactics more than, uh, you know, Red Bull's uh, tactical brilliance. Um, you know, it's uh, they, they just you know, yes, the defense was missing a lot of players with the for international duty. But the defense generally played fine. I mean, when you have three guys missing and you give up one goal, that's a good game. It, it's up to your offense to respond. Uh, and you know, and while I'll say that if they did have a third designated player, there's a fairly good chance that the designated player would have been called up. Uh, um, international duty, but I mean, I think, I, I do think that the holes in the system, the holes in the trust, the system are becoming more and more glaringly obvious, uh, with this team. And, uh, I mean, Vincent Bezicourt, he's, he's not a starter. He's not a starter. He, he's a, he's a USL starter. He's maybe, uh, he's a passable, um, bench guy, but he's not a starter. Um, you know, and, it's uh, it's just one of the one of those things. I mean, I, I think they're trying to plug too many holes cheaply, and it's just not gonna it's not gonna fly. And, and I think it's games like this are gonna be the result. And uh, well, considering what was recently said by Ralph, whatever the fuck his name is, uh, uh, doesn't seem like it's gonna get fixed anytime soon. I'm with you on Bezicor. He's it's we've just seen nothing from him, nothing really. Just, uh, I, complete void uh but this is this is my dislike the fact that once <laughs> Connor Laid went down uh and they clearly had no actual backup because of all the international duty uh <coughs> they had to force the slide wheel into that position and then they had no game plan after that nothing they were completely lost I mean the fact that that was the move that <laughs> I don't know destroyed the team who was freaking my wheel, uh, having to go back. They, they had nothing. There was no answer. There was, it was just absolutely brutal. And if that's going to cause like major issues in this team, then I'm, I'm kind of terrified for the rest of the season. Yeah. I, I mentioned this already. The only creative midfielder we had that game was Bradley Ray Phillips. And that's stretching the word creative. Yep. It's it's sad when you're forward. Whether how, regardless of how good he is on the ball or not, when you're forward, has to be basically behind your whole midfield trying to create something. There's a problem. Listen, I get it. You know, international call ups, but those were mostly in the defensive end, except for Kaku. We had most of our starting offense in there. And listen, yeah. I, I'll give him a little bit of break, right? Um, Mawil had to go back to play defense and took a hell of a beating in the process, which, by the way, Alex Mawil, good job taking a ball to the fucking face and not... <laughs> <laughs> but when Wright Phillips has to go back that far because you're desperate to get anything in the box, I, I, I don't know. At, what was it? I think... Um, I'm blanking on his fucking name. I don't know why. Uh, Sean Davis. He was talking about how Orlando knew what the game plan was. No shit. Everybody knows the Red Bulls game plan. They don't have an alternate game plan at this point. Orlando did what every other team that can beat the Red Bulls does. They sit back and counter. Mm-hmm. It's not It's not rocket science at this point. So if your offense isn't performing, this is the result we're going to get. Now, if we had a, if we had all of our starters, I'm going to guess that, assuming the same offensive performance, that we would have at least just left with zero zero. Mm. But I mean, come on, like you can't tell me that we failed to score because of international call ups. We failed to score because we don't know what the fuck we're doing when we get the ball in the final third at this point. If game if game plan A is to throw it over the top and game plan B is to cross it in from the wing continuously, well, yeah, people are going to stop you. 
I don't think we have to, I don't have to worry about Kaku being in the doghouse anymore because uh, he's definitely be starting from here on in. At, at what point does Kaku just stare at Armus and be like, I fucking told you so? Mm. Mm. Well, I mean, I don't think there's a, I, mean, I told you so there. I think it's, he doesn't want to be there, <laughs> you know? Uh, I mean, look, again, uh, and I'll, I'll highlight again, this team needs a third designated player. They need a third designated player if they want to be competitive. Uh, Bradley Ray Phillips, I'm, in that game, I don't know, man. I think there's more and more worrying signs that he does not have it like he used to anymore. And I think th- this game was another one because even when he was dropping back, his touch wasn't there, his pass as well. I mean, the pass is team-wide in this game were awful. Uh, on uh, on Saturday, um, I, th- I think there's a lot to worry about. Um, you know, it's it's. I definitely think it's a. They need a third designated player. Um, they can't just doing a patchwork offense here. Um, and until that happens, I think it's it, it's gonna it could be scary this year. It could be, um, but again, not no nobody's no one's coming in. I mean, especially with Red Bull Global this past week saying. New York is a farm team, so. My my like is not a like of this game. It's a like that MLS playoffs now take seven teams from each conference because <laughs> if we see a lot of performances like this this year, I'm glad the playoff field is so big. Granted, we'll play on the road, but at least we'll make the playoffs again. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, my only like for this, it, because it, oh my God, what a crappy night that was altogether. It was cold. It's awful. Uh, last year we dropped a game at home to shitty, shitty Chicago. And I know that, and now it was, it was in, uh, later April. So it wasn't as early as this one was, and we still won the supporter shield. So I'm not going to freak out, over, you know, completely freak out over a home loss. Yeah, they had a stinker. Uh, they were missing players. So I, that's one small reason to be optimistic, I guess. Uh, let's get the warm weather in here, too, can we? Can we start warming things up? I so mean, it's getting a little warm. Right? Well, at least we're going to lose. I don't have to lose to be freezing cold. True. So, yeah, I'm not – I obviously, it's early, and I'm definitely not in panic mode. Uh, my like is, I guess, uh, I'm just going to give uh, – a shout out to Alex Muil, um, because I think once he got moved to left back, he you could not criticize him at all for the rest of the game <laughs> because it's just like that's clearly not where he needs he should or needs to be. So, and uh, considering only one goal was let in, that's not and the cross didn't even come from his side. But even though I think he lost the mark, but uh, I'm just gonna not criticize him and I'm just gonna say, hey man, well then for just doing whatever's asked of you. I mean, I. I can't really blame him, right? Because, like you said, he lost his mark, but he lost his mark on a counter when he was playing out of position already. Yeah. Like, that's a lot to ask of somebody. Yeah, I mean, you don't you don't plan on that. There's no part of practice in any game. Do you go, yeah, you know what? Let's practice Mawil had to shift and play left back for an entire, right. for most of a game. And get physically beat up while doing so. Yeah. Exactly. You know, okay. I know I bash my wheel every once in a while, but the fan base is bash my wheel, right? But so here's the thing: I saw somebody bash my wheel for in the 90th minute making the substitute signal when he was down in the his own box. And how do you how do you criticize that guy for that one? Seriously, the, the dude was putting a legitimate shift. At a position he's not supposed to be playing, <laughs> he got hit in the head, and we can have a whole discussion about how short that concussion protocol was. But like he was getting banged up for him to not one not remember that they were out of subs, but to request re- request a sub when they were desperately trying for a goal. Don't blame the guy for that. Mm. That's just, that's just piling on, is what that is. Yeah. Was piling on the wrong person. Frust- <clears throat> frustrating fans piling on. All right. Uh, after thoughts, you guys have anything else you want to talk about before we bring up those uh, listener tweets? Uh, yeah. The people who boot slash question are idiots. Yeah. 
I mean, there's really no, absolutely no reason to boo Sasha Kleshin. Um, you know, he he had a good three years, I think, with the team. Um, where you know he was the assist king one year. It was no, I think it was two years. It was 2015, right? Yeah, oh, you're right. Because last year was his first one out, so yeah, it would have okay. been. So three years. So he had a good, solid three years of the team where he was, you know, he created a whole number of goals. Um, he, and it's not like he left on a free agent contract. He was traded. Right. And like, and I get, and some people are trying to say, well, oh, well he criticized the team after he got traded. What? No shit. Yeah. Who he won? wanted to be here. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is because he was the second captain in two straight years to get traded. You know, kind of uh, on Jesse Marsh Moving Company hit, hit again. <laughs> exactly. It was, you know, face value doesn't exactly look like they're a team that knows what they're doing. So, I mean, they went on to win the Silver Porsche last year, obviously. But, um, yeah, if you boot Sasha Question, you're a moron. Like, I, I'm sorry. You're probably one of those people who called in, like, all those years and was like, hey, Sean Davis, you start over Sasha Question. Yeah, all right. Yeah, sure. Truman, you got anything else to add? Nah, this is trash. Dumpster fire game. It's fucking embarrassing! I forgot to use that earlier. (laughs) Everybody's wondering, I found that specifically for this. And five points, if you can guess what that's from. Me and Truman were unable to guess where it's from. I still think it's Zach Galifianakis. (laughs) Nope. All right. Uh, so after the game, I had asked, or sorry, the day after, I asked um, kind of three questions. One, what was the biggest position of need? Two, is this game an, an anomaly or signs of bigger issues? And more, and kind of more importantly, is how were we able to go into Columbus with a B squad and draw, but couldn't even get a goal at home against Orlando with half the starting eleven in play? Uh, so uh, some responses, uh, Drizzy at. Andre Sino94 said, uh, left back cover, we line on late, we'll destroy this team. Uh, which I responded, but so I basically said, well, Lawrence is back. Isn't that less of an issue? And he goes, correct. But if Mario goes down, late and Duncan just can't cut it, I believe Duncan will improve. Lost hope for Laid. I'm kind of with him on that one. I love Connor Laid, but it's just clearing issues at this point, right? I'm not crazy. No, you're not. And yeah. I do, I actually do think Duncan can improve. Yeah, yeah, Duncan certainly can improve. Um, Lade is he is what he is. Um, Short. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Is there been any injury update? Is how long is he out? Or they keep everything so secret. I haven't heard anything. Yeah, and nobody covers the team. So I mean, I mean, Kamara Lawrence was hurt until he got to Jamaica to play with his team. So. <laughs> Yeah, Kamari Lawrence was out, and then he played a game, and then he was out again. Uh, and then, magically, he was better for international duty. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, mean, I don't know. I mean, again, I, I people complain that Connolly is the back to left uh, to Kamari Lawrence, but, I, I mean, look, it, this is MLS. There's a salary cap. Uh, you're just not going to invest in a quality left back, uh, a backup left back, and, and especially when considering – how few starting ones are available. Right. So. It's, that's just MLS as a whole. Yeah. So the thing you remember, though, is, and, and I, he does have a point, is, well, I, I don't necessarily agree that, that Duncan can't cut it. I think it's just he was given tough assignment week one. He wasn't given a lot of help against the speedy guy, and he just doesn't have a speed. But Duncan is a serviceable, well, at least he appears to be a serviceable built backup. And he's definitely got the height that Lee doesn't because you can't really teach height. Right. Um, so I, I – assuming Mario and Lawrence are healthy, I think having Duncan there is okay. But long term, I don't think Lee is a viable option. Cause, and, and Lee has his own injury history to worry about. So, all right. Uh, Steve Santos at Creepy Taxi said, creative midfield – Millfielder slash forward, that is a designated player. I think that's pretty much in line with everything that Pat has said and you <laughs> said. Yeah. Uh, Tony no M at Tony no M says they need to find anyone, in all caps, who can hit a shot from outside the 18. Well, that's Wu-Tang. He just hasn't done it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Boy Shuffin at Dad of 39. Wow, 39. That's impressive. Says, 
Uh, that particular group of RBMY players while practicing together probably never thought they'd be on the pitch as a unit. And in my honest opinion, that's what <clears throat> showed big time. Also starting to get worried about uh, BWP. Can see frustration on Warriors face too. And uh, responding to him is try list to legend at but JRZZ or <clears throat> JRZ's agree. So much of soccer is knowing your teammates and reading and anticipating their moves. It's hard to build chemistry when you don't have a consistent starting 11. Training helps integrate bench players, but it's the games that truly cement the trust and familiarity with teammates. I mean, you know, so they, yeah, there's something to be said for that, but it, these guys aren't strangers. No. You know, it's a, it, it, they, they, they get to know each other well enough. I mean, just look at uh, the U.S. national team in January camp, coming out of January camp. I mean, they look like they played together for about three weeks because they had played together for three weeks training. So, yeah, I'm not buying that because they haven't played together. And that's why they were so incapable of doing anything on Saturday. Yeah, it's not like there was an emergency USL call up or something yeah. that you could make the argument. Yeah. Um, Kevin Dostra at KD Rasto three need Kaku or someone to get in that number ten role and create chances. Yes, plus somebody who can take people on 1v1 and create things. Yep. A third designated player, <laughs> maybe. Uh, Jeremiah at Red Coach J says, some are going to make this about the backups on the back line, Duncan, Lade, and maybe Tarek. But I don't buy it. Last night was on poor play going forward. That kept Orlando in the game. We take our chances early as usual. They're out of it long before that. Something's off offensively. Yeah, we covered that one <laughs> like a little bit here. Yep. Uh, and then last uh, – Diego Fernandez at T Fernandez 113. I think a huge issue is that when the midfield breaks down, they try to hit a lofted ball over the top to BWP or a winger. That's never worked in the past four years of them trying it and has killed us in big games. Montreal, Columbus, Atlanta, and Chivas. Yeah, which we've already discussed, but we'll keep beating that drum because it's it's so true and yet they never learn from it. Mm-hmm. The worst part, that- what drives me crazy too is uh, – when they get to that desperate point when they're just lobbing the balls up, they actually have a lot of time to not have to do that. They actually still have time on the clock uh, to create and move the ball down the field, and instead they just go up, oh, throw it up. Here we go. Go get it. Go get yeah. it, something your old BWP. Yeah, this team is not a defending counter team. It's a, it's, it's a high press in your face team. So when yeah, when it's, it comes to long ball time, it's just it's an exercise in futility. <sighs> All right. Uh, prediction contest. Nobody got it right. You all said wins. So, Truman, you're still in first with four points. Pat and I are in second with one. Uh, fan predictions. Nobody got that right either because everybody predicted a win. Wow. Yeah. So, that means currently our top four remain the same. They're all tied for first at Syracuse Pinball, FCBM, Jeremiah Dempster, and Nicholas Lambert all tied at the top of our fan predictions with four points each. Um, let's see. So now we come upon the Chicago match. Uh, that game is Sunday, March 30th, or sorry, Saturday, March 30th, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern time at Toyota Park in Chicago. Game will be on MSG. Chicago comes into this game with a two, sorry, zero, two, and one record, only good for one point with a minus three goal difference. So they are not doing that well. And fan predictions. Uh, eight people so far because I only put it up last night by accident. Uh, right now, 75% say the Red Bulls will win. 75% say they will score two goals. And 50% say they'll give up one. So right now, the consensus is a 2-1 victory for the Red Bulls on the road. Uh, Truman, you're up mm. first. What do you think is going to happen on Saturday? I don't fucking know. I don't know. Mayhem. Uh, is everyone playing in this game? Do we have everyone back finally? No clue. Can we not? No, no Lawrence got hurt on the flight back. Oh, okay. All right. Well, <laughs> well they have. I guess it's my wheel back on that side again. Uh, I'm. Uh, oh, I'm going to stay slightly confident in this team and say that that game against Orlando was some kind of weird, bizarre, cold weather fluke. Um, I'm going to check the temperature in Chicago because if it's going to be really cold again, well, they're clearly not going to win. So uh, let's check that right now. Chicago. All right, we're going to go to Saturday. Oh, 43 degrees. That's not going to be fun. Uh, 
I, I want to keep confidence in this team, but it's hard. Uh, Chicago blows. So I'm going to say they're going to return to form. They usually bounce back after a shitty loss. Let's just say a one nothing win. Uh, because, again, like Pat said, they ain't scoring a bunch of goals. <laughs> yeah. They're super not into doing that. Um, but I think they can get back on track. Again, they've, they've done pretty well in these recent stretch of games in Chicago. I, I, I have to believe at full strength that Kaku's starting. Uh, they can at least get something out of this. Uh, I am definitely not optimistic about it, as bad as Chicago may be. Um, I'm not quite lost, um, you know, pes- pessimistic, although, I mean, after losing to one of the worst teams in the league at home, maybe I should be. Um, but I- I'm just going to go that I- – I'm going to go with a 1-1 road draw. Um, you know, again, yes, uh, Chicago's terrible. They should be able to squeeze one in, uh, but I do think they'll give one up. Um, yeah, I'm not really expecting much. And my gut tells me loss, but uh, I just, I, I, I'm not ready to believe they've completely fallen off the cliff, cliff yet. If we were playing this game without the international break, I think I would go win. But I just see you would you would really hope after last week that the players would come out angry, but they're not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I mean, they came out of the loss in CCL and took took 45 minutes to wake up. And even then it actually took another 20 minutes on top of that first goal for them to really do anything. Um, I, I'm going to go with Pat here in the one, one draw. I think they have enough to get a goal, but not enough to win. And uh, yeah, it's just, they're not, not in a position right now to do much. I mean, I'm hoping you just keep, Keep towards. Okay, don't know what that was, but <laughs> I opened a video on my phone. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, they'll, they they'll do enough to to get a point at least, and honestly, nonetheless, a point on the road is still a good thing. So, I'll take it. I won't like it, but I'll take it. All right, uh, New York Red Bulls two. Their last match, they drew one one at home versus Nashville FC. But but they did that in sexy jerseys. That's right. They did the, the new red jerseys with the uh, it's pinstripes, right? Like very thin pinstripes. It's like a plaid pattern almost. Oh no, you're right. It's like I don't know, but people people snatched them up. They didn't have a lot for sale, but I know they were gone real fast. And then they have a different gray jersey as well, which it looks really good from the picture I saw. See what happens when you make different jerseys available. People go and buy them. Imagine that. Yeah. People like different stuff. Yeah. People are stupid. Just like take a jersey, wipe your ass with it, and say it's new, and they'll buy it. Yeah. You know? I'll buy it right now. I'm going to go. I'm going to go buy that one. I got the shit jersey. (laughs) I was going to say, it's the Red Bull shit stain weekend. Um, So. New York Rebels two right now have a one zero one record, four points, number fifth, number five in the East of the USL Championship. Uh, next match is uh, tomorrow or today, depending on when you're listening to this. Uh, home against Memphis nine zero one, which I had to do a double take on the name because I did not know about this team before. Uh, that's seven p.m. Uh, March 29th, so Friday night. What the fuck is that? The, the zip, the area code? I don't believe so. So what is it? Let's find out. Dumb. Wikipedia. I mean, I guess it's better than United Sporting, but... Uh, yeah, right. Not by much. Okay. Uh, let's see. Memphis. USL renamed Memphis to Memphis 901 FC. This was last year. Um, let's see. Okay, yep. 901 refers to the region's area code. Lame. <laughs> 
Way, way to go, USL. Just when you were making inroads at doing some stuff people were happy about, you do that. Um, Sky Blue FC is still waiting on their home opener, or sorry, their <laughs> season opener, uh, April 13th. So that'll be in about two weeks. Yes, two weeks. Uh, I could actually go to that game. It's down here in Washington, or Maryland, technically. All right. Uh, so that leaves us with two things left. But So the first is the dumping ground. I'm the trash man. All right. I got nothing, so you guys go ahead. Why did, why did Greg Schiano just step down uh, from the Patriots? Coaching uh, staff. According to him, he has to focus on his faith and his family. What did he do? Yeah, I know, right? What did he do? I mean, hold on, hold on. If if we're doing a what did he do, his boss, his boss's boss, did a much worse thing. So. <laughs> yeah, he can't get in that much trouble. Yeah. Maybe he's the one who recommended the place to craft. <laughs> he's That's like, dude, job. did you know that sometimes at the end of the massage, they jerk you off? <laughs> was it near? Was it, is Mar-a-Lago near Tampa? Because that could explain a lot. <laughs> uh, I don't have a lot to talk about, but I know Pat watched some games and involved America. Yeah. Well, well, first I wanted to like really touch upon again. Um, mentioned earlier in the show that Ralph Ragnick or whatever his name is. Um, right. You're he, not me. You get the name right, okay? Yeah, but I don't have the spelling in front of me, so fuck it. Um, yeah, he basically spoke to German media this week and talked about how, you know, Red Bull, New York Red Bull's purpose is to produce players for the larger brand. It's nothing else. I mean, that that is sends a pure signal. I mean, let, let's face it, the writing has been on the wall for a while now. That sends about as clear a signal as possible to this fan base that championships just aren't in the picture. And you know what? And I think a lot of fans rightfully are probably asking themselves right now, why support this team? I mean, I, I, I admit, I mean, just reading that yesterday was one of the most damning uh, indictments of the team. And to myself, like, why am I wasting my time supporting this team when I know they are never going to push for a championship? You know, because that's, hey, that's, what, that's what we watch sports for, for our team to be the best. And I think when you send that message, hey, this is a farm team, uh, the fans repay in the attendance that we've seen and, and it's massive drop off in the last two years. I mean, that's what people, I mean, people try to come up with the old tired excuses, but look, not long ago, we were getting 20,000 people in that stadium. But now it, it's been oh so very clear that, um, you know, this team just is not interested in winning. It's just interested in producing players that they can either sell or bring up to Leipzig. And, um, you know, and, and I think in, it's just it's a shame. It's a shame that it's come to this. It's a shame that it's been so clearly finally stated. You know, they could have at least pretended, and maybe it would have been a little bit better. Um, but, yeah, it's just it's frustrating to be a Rebel fan and know that help's not on the way. It's not going to get any better. Uh, and you just bet you're just going to have to pray that one day they have – a golden generation of homegrowns, but I mean that's I think supremely wishful thinking. I, I'm gonna, I have to just slightly devil's advocate just a little bit because uh, it is it is kind of frustrating to see our our young kids go elsewhere. Um, and I, I'm not bringing up the tired. We need our players to go to Europe to improve. Uh, but think of it this way: <laughs> how many players has this team honestly generated? that has moved up to bigger clubs. One. You know, it, 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 re- it doesn't happen as much as you think right now. Uh, maybe it happens more in the future. Uh, but I like it. I don't think that the team is never filled with like these amazing homegrowns that are all going to get signed. I mean, they, I think the problem is, is that they do be, they do bring players in, but like Pat said, they're not bringing in that strong star designated player. Um, I love the Wu Tang as much as the next guy. I mean, I got his fucking jersey for crying out loud. You know, I, I really love players like that, but it's not, it's not that star guy. Um, 
that's going to maybe get you through to MLS Cup. So being a feeder team, um, when we, we chatted about this between the three of us last night. Uh, every league is a feeder league. Uh, we just happen to be feeding any of our players to a certain particular place. <laughs> They're all going probably to Germany for the most part. Look, I mean, well, for one thing, I will say uh, Tyler Adams, obviously – the bigger, biggest product that's uh, left this organization so far. But, I mean, let, let's not poo-poo Matt Miazga. Um, he's still having a fine career. Still, sure. still, young, still young enough that he can uh, end up playing for a bigger club in one of the big four leagues. Um, you know, uh, before that, I mean, Juan Agudelo flamed out, that's for sure. But, I mean, up to that point, I mean, really the only other academy guy uh, that made it was DeAndre Yedlin. So, I mean um, – and look, there's, I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with being a feeder team, but so is Atlanta United. Atlanta United is a feeder team too, but they still went out and re-signed Pity Martinez uh, to replace Miguel Amiron. And yeah, Atlanta's having its troubles right now. Uh, I, I get that. But, um, you know, it, it's you can be a feeder team, and then you can still also plug the holes, especially when you have a designated player spot sitting there. Uh, and it's like, and Matthias Jorgensen, I, I think they, I hope he blossoms into something, uh, but I think they waited too long to get that back for B, BWP. And it, it's just, this team is trying to do it on the cheap. And uh, again, just trying to get players up uh, and trying to find cheaply produced products that they can have, like I said, sell on or bring up to their own uh, Leipzig organization. Um, and, Again, I think as Red Bull fans, I think it, the nails. I mean, I think it's time. It's time to finally admit a championship. I just, I don't think they're coming. I, I don't think it's coming. I think the priority for this organization is is nil for for this. Uh, unless it's producing talent, uh, homegrown talent. It, it's that's it. That's its purpose. All right, Pat. What happens first? Red Bulls fill third designated player spot. Or Giants finally draft quarterback of the future. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to go Giants quarterback, uh, just because I don't think they're ever gonna sign that third DP, and I think the Giants at some point will uh, sign a quarterback, whether it be Tua or Hell. If they want to tank for Trevor Lawrence, just give me two awful years and get me Trevor Lawrence in uh, a few years. I'm alright with that. That always goes well in the New York market, of course. So here's the, the difference between Atlanta and the Red Bulls. Atlanta just doesn't have any parent interests. That's really what it comes, comes down to. Because Atlanta is only owned by Arthur Blank. It's not owned by any other soccer team. That's what I'm getting yeah. at. Agreed. So they're both feeder teams in the sense that they're they're not the final stop. Or not phrase it. They're not... I was going to phrase this. They're not the show for soccer players. Like, that's not what the ultimate goal is. The ultimate goal is to get to a country like uh, England or Germany or Spain and play in those places. But it it does suck that we are in apparently in a situation where they don't seem to want to spend money on bringing in talent that is not through the academy. And here's and here's a slightly different spin on it that I think is being missed, at least to a degree. The investment in bringing in big name players that is not just to it shouldn't be viewed as just to win a title. Playing with big name players helps improve guys around them. Mm-hmm. Thierry Henry was one of the best mentors to some of the guys on the team when he was there. Remember Dan Richards? But Miazga played with Henry. Remember that? I mean, it was briefly, but he did. Oh, no, no. Yeah, he well, technically he did, but he didn't really play that much. I'm sorry. I was thinking that that his big year was when Henry was still with the team. His big year was when Marsh took over. Um, but no, having, having big name players can act as – a different level of training for some players. Like you want, you want guys to do well in Europe. Like Adams obviously is doing well. Part of that was because he is fitting a system and he was kind of 
just kind of works for the system because it can run for days and not ever fall over, apparently. Um, but getting a big-name player in not only helps you win titles, it can provide those players that may be on the edge of becoming better. It, it can get them that little extra push they need to step up their game. It shouldn't be seen as just you know, winning a title. And don't get me wrong, I want to win a title. So if they'll invest on a third DP that gets us there, I'm perfectly fine with it. But if it makes everybody on the team better, then that player also becomes a development tool. And that is, I think, a part that's missing in all this. Is that that's the view of sometimes investing in other players that you didn't you didn't make can help your overall development strategy. Sign a sign a, a relatively big name, and we won't have to talk about this, right? Because then, if you're at least showing faith in signing players, you're not going to sweat too much sending young kids off to Europe. Mm-hmm. That is true. Just, just give give the fans and give the team something back. Yeah, they have the money. I mean, you you can bring somebody in. You don't need another Thierry Henry, but bring in a real quality player. Yeah. I mean, I, I, Cristiano Ronaldo's coming, guys. Don't worry. He's, <laughs> he's coming. I don't know what year, but he's coming. Yeah, no, agreed. I mean, that's just it. I mean, uh, and look, it doesn't have to be a Thierry Henry anymore. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, a lot of these teams that are improving are bringing in the younger designated player who either is, you know, at the top of their game in South America or maybe in not the best club situation, all of Joseph Martinez when he was in Syria. Um, you know, bring one of these players up here and, you know, let them, you know, like Jay said, I think mentor, I mean, Thierry Henry improved the game. Dan Richards improved the game of Bradley Ray Phillips for sure. Um, you know, so it's, um, but you show this fan base you care. And, uh, and Jay, you said, you know, Atlanta's not part of a, a an ownership group and you're right. They, they, their top priority is Atlanta United. Well, that's the ownership I want. I don't want the ownership that sees us as a uh, a farm team. I don't care that Ribble Global has billions of dollars. I mean, if they're not spending it on on talent to push this team over the top, then I don't care. I want the I want the, the owner that will. You know, it's like I mean, it's just it's. I want a, I want a championship. I want a championship, and the supporter shields aren't enough. Uh, open cups aren't up. This is America. It's the team that wins the playoffs is the champion. I want an MLS cup. Oh, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not dis- disagreeing. I was just trying to put in context of what mm-hmm. what Truman was saying. Yeah. So it's just you know, it, it, but I, I I think it to actually verbalize what verbalize to New York, a team that loves winners, a team that uh, or a city that loves winners. Uh, metro region is actually probably the smarter base since like, most of our fans are from New Jersey anyway. Um, you know, we root for winners. We root for teams that, uh, compete. It's, it's just a shame. All right. Let's move, let's move on. Anybody else got another topic for, uh, dumping grounds? Well, USA won, or no, well, they won. They beat Ecuador. They drew Chile 1 1. Um, they look fine. I didn't pay super close attention to Chile game, so I have to admit that. Yeah, I like half even didn't even know it was on. <laughs> yeah. I didn't watch any game, so yeah, they look they look fine under Borja Alter. I mean, Chile is a very good team. Um, so I mean, it kind of sucks that both Pulisic and Weston McKinney left hurt. Um, but Pulisic got three to four weeks from what I just saw. Yeah, Pul- yeah, Pulisic, but I, yeah, three to four. I don't know about McKinney. Um, he's a sprain and, uh, pull six to thigh chair, pull six to thigh chair. So yeah, that, that's probably not great, but, uh, hopefully they can be healthy in time for the gold cup and what the U S can go on a run in the gold cup. So. All right. Chairman, you got anything? Uh, two things real quick. We're apparently playing Cuba and Canada and the wacky do CONCACAF super duper fun cup. Yay. So that, that's something. Uh, and while we were talking about big stars that played on the Red Bulls, uh, it was announced earlier today that at the end of the month, Tim Cahill will be retiring Ooh, wow. for professional football after he's been playing with John Shedper. That's the team he's on now. John Jam Shedper. 
Are they they? from Australia? Indian Super League. Oh, okay. So, uh, he was definitely a fiery character. I always liked Tim Cahill. He's always a, a, a favorite player of mine, even though he played on the enemy in Liverpool. Uh, but it'll be, you know, I don't know. Good dude. I know he didn't yeah. completely come through as much as they wanted for this team, but uh, good for him. Yeah. Good career. Yeah, absolutely. I, I saw something on the Everton subreddit uh, where he picked, like, his the best 11 that he played with, or, like, in his opinion. And I think it was all Everton except for uh, Ford and the goalkeeper who are Australian. And one of the first comments I saw was, didn't he play with Thierry Henry and, Mar- yeah. <laughs> and Marquez on the Red Bulls? Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, he did. Although, in fairness to him, Marquez wasn't that great when he was in New York. No, not at all. I was kind of surprised Henry wasn't there. But, I mean, he was a big Everton guy. So yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't surprise me that nine out of the 11 are Everton players. All right. So uh, if that's it, then it's the only thing we have left is Truman's terrible team of the week. That's terrible. Well, Cincinnati is just handing out disappointment to everybody. Who to thunk it? And uh, this week, now obviously this wasn't a blowout game, but they uh, beat New England at home in New England in Foxborough two nothing. Uh, New England, they stink. Mm. You know, somehow we always forget about how bad they're going to be uh, when we're thinking about like, who's going to be the worst team of the season. But not good. There is there is no hope. Just just think. I know we're Red Bulls fans, and I know we get mad at the team, but Revs fans have it so much worse right now. They have nothing. They have nothing going on. Nothing. They have a famous ex national team players or coach. That's it. Their owner's uh, under. Is he under indictment at this point? Uh, he apparently wants a trial by jury. Yeah, that's a yes. So we could be Res fans. <laughs> um, we might be beating them up more than other teams than we thought we were going to beat up. So, uh, not trying to jinx this, but if Robert Kraft gets convicted, then they absolutely have to be the terrible team of the week for that week, right? <laughs> sure. I mean, he's not going to. He's rich. So. Well, no, no, no. He can still be convicted. He just won't serve jail time or get a pardon. There's no, a he's, def- he's definitely not serving jail time. He'll, uh, he'll serve uh, he'll serve uh, community service time uh, critiquing videos. Yeah. He'll, he'll do um, community time already served, even though he hasn't served anything. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Baseball's back, baby. More things to to feel pain over. Oh, That's next it. week. So ne- next week, um, we got to talk about this offline, but we got possibly three shows coming out. One one regular show and two patron shows. Because we, we got we got the month. No, we got the March wrap up. We got our regular show, and then we may be doing a WrestleMania preview. Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, we gotta talk about this. Well, we're making the 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 uh, <laughs> WrestleMania preview combine it with our March wrap up. That's what we're doing right there. That's not a bad idea. Yep, three shows you sick son of a bitch. I wasn't sure. I said we gotta talk about it. All right. Anyway, let's wrap this one up. Patreon.com slash Red Bull Rant. One buck a month is all you need for exclusive content, such as our monthly wrap-up, um, special stuff like rest, uh, WrestleMania preview, or maybe possibly both. Um, live post game, like we did after the um, game against San Jose. If you want to email us during the week, Red Bull Rant at gmail.com. If you'd rather leave a voicemail, get your voice played on the show, 973-348-5329. Facebook.com slash Red Bull Rant on Twitter at Red Bull Rant for the show at Doc the Stooge for myself at PMAC D82 for Pat at the Truman for Truman. Subscribe to our show via iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music, YouTube, SoundCloud, <coughs> Stit, um, what the hell? Spotify. I should remember the other rest for a second. Last words before we get out of here. 
Don't make us get the pitchforks out and storm the castle, Red Bulls. Don't make us do it. We want to go uh, to next week's game happy. So uh, get your shit together and win. Yeah, sure. Do that. <laughs> All right. So for Pat Truman and myself, this has been episode number 302 of the Red Bull Rant. Thank you guys for tuning in. And as always, go Red Bulls. Bye, bye, bye. Lights.